Now another issue with the Phantom 3 is it's, it's integrated, so the camera and gimbal are all part of the quad. So if they get damaged, they're very expensive to replace. They can be replaced, but it's a lot of money. So uh, I wanted something to protect it. Now the options were some extended landing gear, which I ordered to look at, where basically you swap the landing skids over for a slightly longer set. Now I think these probably would work. There's two issues with them. The first is it means it won't the, the quad will no longer fit in the case. So if I've got a rucksack or a hard case, it won't fit because it's too tall. Um, the second thing is that uh, it may mean that the gimbal leg will be in the, sh the, the phantom leg will be in the shot when you're filming, especially if you're filming straight down. Now this is an issue which I have with my um, Phantom 1, where if the camera's pointing straight down, if there's any wind, the, the quad will tilt to compensate, and you end up with skids in the shot, which doesn't look very nice. So you either have to crop it out afterwards, or you can't use the shot. So I went off that idea when I saw them, but instead there's these gimbal plates you can get. Now I think the advice is to get the thinnest that you can find, because you don't want it to be like a big wing that's gonna affect the flight. But it does mean that if something, if you land on a bit of bumpy ground, it just means that you've got a little bit of something that stops the ground or a stone or a branch from whacking the gimbal to protect it. So I think for the sake of it, it's very cheap. I paid um, £3.99 delivered for the, this gimbal protection plate with a, um, a little sunshade and a gimbal lock. So they're really cheap um, and these things I just got to have a look at really. So I think that's really good advice. That leads on to the second thing which is the gimbal lock. In transport, there's obviously a risk of the gimbal being damaged. So the way that it comes is with this clear plastic piece, which slides in like that. Now, as you can see, it's not very easy to fit. It also, I don't think, is a particularly good gimbal lock. I mean, it does, if you get it in right, it's not quite in right, is that in? Right, when you get it on right, it does actually lock the gimbal, but it's quite fiddly to get on and off. And given that the whole point is to protect the gimbal from damage, to have a, a, a gimbal lock that you're having to sort of squeeze and mess about with is kind of the opposite of what you want. So this is the cheap option, which is uh, which I got with the gimbal lock. So these are a pound or, or so. And basically it just slides over the, uh, the lens and then it just clips up onto the, onto the gimbal frame. So that does the job. I mean, that stops it moving around and it's much, much easier to fit. And um, I can just pull that off there. If I do that again, because that was a bit clumsy. So we just push it on there and then slide it in there. It does fit fine. So that is definitely better than the standard one. However, I did find this very nice flexible uh, version, which is 3D printed in a flexible rubbery material. Um, I actually saw this on the kitchen table on Simon's uh, video. And normally I'm quite mean, but I thought, well, it's, it's worth protecting the gimbal and this is really nice so I do actually suggest in this case it is worth spending some money on getting a really nice solution and that just slides in and that's a really solid lock and because it's flexible you're not going to scratch the the lens or the plastics fitting that it also means it's very easy to remove uh, and to fit on and off because uh, it, it's flexible so I, I think that's really lovely and the fact that it's orange also means it's nice and bright they do it in orange or green just so you don't accidentally plug the battery in with it on, which is another big no-no.